my parents. Oh, wow. My parents. When you went to the movies in their era, it was musicals. It was musicals, you know. So that's what was, get my sister and I, we'd, we'd go to see every musical, uh, every movie musical we could. And then we started going live to seeing, you know, Broadway tours. I lived in Philadelphia. I'm from Philadelphia. Yeah. New York was an hour and a half away. And so uh, I've gone to New York to see some shows when I was a kid, but mostly we saw tours. First stop was Philadelphia. And so I saw my first show was Camelot. Um, <gasps> and I'm trying to think, I wrote down some Camelot, King and I, Oklahoma. I mean, all of these beautiful old golden age musicals. Mm. Oh, just magnificent. So that was a huge influence for me. And, and, I, and I studied voice as a, like, like a seven year old. I wow. had voice lessons and I was studying singing opera. Oh, wow. Yeah, singing opera. And I, my, mother had, my mother had a beautiful voice. My dad didn't. My mother had a beautiful <laughs> voice. And then uh, one day, this, uh, after a couple of years of doing opera, my teacher rolled this big mirror in front of me. She goes, this is musical theater. And this is what I want you to sing to yourself and entertain yourself. And that was it. Uh, I, was, I was always hooked on musical theater, but that was, oh my God, it, I, there was nothing else I wanted to do, so. Well, I was super lucky to have a mom that was a piano teacher. So I was always around music from the time that I was born. So I had always played, uh, just kind of messed around on the piano and then started into formal lessons when I was five. and. My main influences, I guess, when I was about the junior high age were the Beatles, believe it or not. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, it was so fun. The anthologies had come out, and so it was, like, brand new to me, even though they were from the 60s. So um, I did band, and I did accompanying for choir at school. So that was kind of my world when I was in the junior high, high school age, and there was no internet, <laughs> so I didn't really have a lot accessible other than that, but the Beatles were such a wealth of information and like amazing music and variety. And that's kind of where I just developed my love for listening to different songs and figuring out different parts. And, and, and then in school playing for these, uh, for different singers or, or I played the clarinet and I played the trumpet. And so I just kind of got, had a great fun little music edu education back in the day. have your music in a really good shape however they I mean but I, I don't even know I don't even know what's the best way because some of them use iPads now yeah. and that kind of oh, scares yeah. me a lot but um, have everything clean have your cuts clean have everything perfect mm. make it easy the easiest possible way for them to follow you because yeah. they're there to support you and uh, you want to have everything clean and neat you walk in, you say hello, you go to the, the pianist and you say, uh, give them their music and know your tempo, yes. set your tempo and go over your cuts real quick. Smart. That's now, what you have to do, clean. Right, so now picking a pianist for, like, like they, they have a pianist that they're gonna be working with. Um, talk about that symbiotic relationship that you need to have with um, your pianist and the people that you're performing with. Uh, uh, in, in this situation, when somebody is there for you? Yes. I think it's kind of this, know your music. First of all, know your song. And there's a question you have here, and I don't know if you want to jump to it or not, because this yes. will come in. The, the, what I have, this might just connect perfectly with it. What um, that young singers need, what they, the mistakes they make. Yes, yes. Okay, so yes. let me add that to this conversation, if Perfect. I may. Yes. Um, so, you must know your songs. Don't come to a competition without knowing your material. Without you're gonna have to you have to know your basic song. If they're gonna throw a, if you have a week like Feinstein has and they 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 give you some really interesting uh, arrangements and you get to work with it and play with it and then you come back because you have a week before you're gonna perform it. Here you only have two. Sometimes we have three days. So know your music. And when I say know your music, do not come. And a lot of them don't know this, mm. but I'll tell them that. Come knowing the original music, not what the contemporary singer, not what somebody copied and they're going to do their coloring on it and blah, blah, blah. You want to put your, your stamp on it, but you better know every note, every correct note. So you go to the source, go to the original sheet music and learn the real notes because 
you ha you have to know that that is something that upsets us all mm. when you don't know you do your homework know your notes sing a song like it's written yeah originally right so that's like a big deal for me and when, when people come when you come that to a, a competition like this an educational competition and you are not prepared it's very frustrating because you're not going to get there and then you're you're going to get upset because we get upset it's like, right we're upset for you we're upset for you if you don't do your homework do your homework kiddos do your homework learn the songs learn. and when you have to work with a, a a pianist like you know we're doing this get your music ready again have it in a really good shape your your penis is going to have the music beforehand in this situation and they're going to look at it and they're going to get a feel for what they might like to do with it maybe change it up a little bit mm -hmm. and to see you know give it a little more flair and they're going to meet you and then they're going to say oh this person can do this they don't know what you can do right so make sure you have your rolodex of tricks you know or your colorings you know i mean they're very young and they they're not they, they they don't know a lot about vocal colors yet and that's why we try to it, we i integrate that right away they don't have to sing it one way you can sing it this way or that way with give us a warmth give us a brightness you know you can play with it and that's you have to have a collaboration and a relationship be open to a, a, having a relationship with uh your your uh, your uh, musical person your musical director your accompanist your pianist but because they're going to guide you Right. And, and and they know a lot more than we do. <laughs> that's their specialty. Right, you know? exactly. And I think that's one thing I love about Songbook is that they get a pianist that is going to be there to guide so, you. So and so and, good. And sometimes you don't have that if you're, you know, going to a competition. You just have yeah. to, here's my music. I mean, there are yeah. places out here for cabaret yes. or, you know, here's music to sing for someone um, out here at, at um you know, the different places uh, that, that they have to where people can come and listen. Um, and they need to have that. And also that we have a plethora of different ways of finding different music. Yes. On yes. our phone, Spotify, we have, you know. Everything. Yeah, and there's so many things even on YouTube, you know, of, of old songs. But I, I think that's another thing of, of telling um, the kiddos um, and hopefully getting them to listen to all different styles. Yes, Someone's all different styles. That. Don't and get stuck. Right, and and it's an opportunity that I wish I would have had as a young person because you do you get stuck in that oh I heard somebody sing it this way so I I heard first songbook with Linda Ronstadt still love yes. her favorite oh, I love that favorite. album yes, yes. 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 and yes. so I was like I don't know what these songs are but they're fantastic and so I started listening and but I would use my coloring like her because that was what I did and yes. then I, I heard like Ella Fitzgerald do oh and Anita O'Day and I'm like oh and you start adding all these different um, nuances of different women and men who are singing it and I think that gives them a really good kind of understanding or at least to start with yes. just a few different people yes um, absolutely but going absolutely. back to the original is is fantastic so. I want to talk about practicing yes let's do so, that <laughs> um, so kiddos um, I'm all about practicing mm. and I don't think you can, uh, ever practice enough. That's just how I feel you, because you find yourself in doing that. Mm. You find your voice. The more you use your voice, the more range you're going to find, the strength mm. you find in your voice and, uh, how you want to communicate things is so important. Mm. And, uh, I, I have my students who are, I have a bunch of students now who are getting ready to do their, you know, university auditions. Right. And I give them a plan. I give them a workout plan. I give them an, this is day one, day two, day, okay, you can take off Saturday, Sunday, just work on monologues those days, rest nice. your voice, and then get back to do your Monday, have a light singing, Tuesday, a little heavier, you know, and you have to do this. Yeah. And the more songs you try to sing, the more different um songs you find that you want to try out try them out you get you maintain your book that way you get a great book of songs yeah. and um just practice and dance and acting everything in vocals you have if you're going to do musical theater you've got to be really good at all of it find your specialty mm. and and enhance that really find what you're what you're you feel really comfortable doing and really um strong doing yeah and uh, I'm not saying 
don't get too comfortable, but find where your strengths are yeah. and build on your strengths. And then you stretch a little bit, but right. find your core. I think you find your, you know, your, your roots as an, as an artist and just keep singing, 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 singing. That only makes you stronger, stronger singer. So when I was first figuring out the accompanist game for myself, I learned that I liked my books prepared a certain way. And the way that I like things is not necessarily how other people like things. Like I love having my music in plastic sheet protectors uh, because sometimes if my hands will get dry and I'm trying to turn one that's not, I can't grab it. And it's like, ah, and I don't want to mess up my singer that I'm playing for. Um, but a lot of other people don't prefer to have plastic sheets because of the glare. So. Um, so I would suggest that if a student is working with an accompanist or a music director that they ask their preference on what they prefer because you never know sometimes somebody might have a weird preference like I guess mine's atypical um, but yeah I mean uh, there are some like nightmare experiences for me where where I couldn't grab the page and turn it and then I had to like figure out to keep going and make up something underneath the singer and you know, sometimes that can go surprisingly well, or it can be a disaster. Oh, I understand. I have to say one that's a really tough, Zorba, was, which was my first Broadway show, was just wow. incredible. Mm. And, and also I have to say Man of La Mancha, which he's photos yes. from. I, I gorgeous, love this gorgeous. But Man of La Mancha, that role of Aldonza is just oh, wow. in, incredible, incredible. So, and, and vocally it's incredible. So that was exciting. But I, every show that I've done, there's, a, there's, a, there's some Baker's Wife. I did the Baker's Wife way, way, way back. And that was pretty, pretty darn exciting. My um, first story is about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame legend, godfather of rock and roll, I guess he's called, Chuck Berry. Oh, wow. Yeah, so at the time that I played for Chuck Berry, he was 84, and the first time that I saw Chuck Berry was when I was on stage with the other band members and we had started the first tune, and it was so cool because he walked in from the back of the stage with his guitar. What? And he was just like, he was so great. Um, just walked up and he's like, I'm Chuck Berry. <laughs> stage work when I'm doing the a Great American Songbook, I find that, look, I find that those songs find us. I just mm. do. I mean, we choose the songs, we choose them for a reason. They speak to us, right? They, yeah. they are, they are, they tell us something and we are, oh my gosh, I have to sing that. Here's an opportunity to pick your own, choose your own music to sing. Um, I think they should be looking at the old, old singers <clears throat> like Edie Gourmet, who has the, your voice reminds me of, I mean, you have one of those Perfect, beautiful, stunning voices. And oh, oh my you. gosh, I love your voice so much. Uh, Eva Cassidy's another one. Eva yes. Cassidy, I mean, incredible sound. Yes. I'm trying to sing, you know, Sinatra, Bert, you know, Tony Bennett, Harry Connick Jr., Al Jarreau, more jazz. Just all these old singers. <clears throat> and, and, and I'll tell you, songs are done over and over. Sting has some cool stuff happening. With, yeah. with I'm thinking, I'm looking at Great American Songbook now. I'm thinking Golden Age songs. And um, you know, it's not always about the most incredible voice. Mm -hmm. It's always about a combination. You can't just be a singer and that's it. That's it. Yeah. I think that you have to find your unique, what, what does it for you? What, what do you like singing, first of all? Mm -hmm. And not copy people. Mm -hmm. Make things your own. Make, try different things. Try different ways of approaching a song. And it's always important to know where it came from. Mm. It's important to like have a couple different like arrangements that you listen to. So you're like, okay, based on what these people are doing, I can get the gist of what's common to keep and then what's common to kind of change around and make your own. Right. So you don't want to sound just like Frank Sinatra because there has been a Frank Sinatra. Like you want to sound like yourself, but it's important to take some of the things that Frank did and experiment with them and see how they translate through you. Um, and, and so it's a journey really to find yourself as an artist and your own particular voice. Yeah. But I think it's important to be aware of the history, but also to experiment with your own things. I got a call, my agent called me and she said, um, John Kander and Fred, I wanna see you, cause I'd done Zorba with them. 
and probably not not too long before this call and uh they want to see you audition for the act which is liza minnelli's uh, her solo like her one woman show it's going to be at um a radio city hall a radio city music hall and they need a ch chorus of like mature women they wanted women who weren't 20s or 30. Right, right. they wanted them yeah, like 30s 40s and i said oh uh what do they have to what do they want she goes well you have to tap i said oh no i don't tap i don't tap <laughs> She said, you have to go. I said, no, I don't tap. You have to go. No, I don't tap. Under Read my lips. I do not. I do time steps. I do, I do flies. I can do, you know, but I, no. Yeah, no. I so guess. I had to go to this audition. My goodness. And I walk in and there's Liza Minnelli. She's there. Hi. Ah! Oh my God. Okay, we're going to tap. I said, oh, no. <laughs> so... I made a fool of myself, I guess. I mean, whatever, I, I whatever. I went because my agent said, you have to go and they want you to come in. I said, tell them I don't tap. No, you have to go and you do, you have to go. Yeah. And I said, okay, I'll just stand in the back. They'll know I can't tap. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> it's right or off. Anybody in the front row, you know, they're there. Back now. <laughs> so on the other hand, I have worked with a couple of people that are not as kind as like Kristen Chenoweth and people like that. And, and there was this one show that I was arranging for and the, the artist was amazing, super high level, A-lister, amazing, like unbelievable performance, right? Well, this show is in Utah and Utah is at a high elevation and everybody that sings in Utah that's not from Utah is like, am I dying? Do I need an oxygen tank? Like. I've seen I've seen people have to get oxygen tanks and go <gasps> in between. Oh, wow! <laughs> and so um, anyway, so what happened is is we get this like panicked panicked situation from the artist that's like, who gave you these keys? Who arranged these keys for me? And I was like, but I was hiding because I'm like I'm scared. Oh, I don't. No. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. And and then they're like she goes well how did you how how did this happen like these are not the right keys and we're like actually your person gave them to us like and and i i had heard of this artist being very difficult in the past before because i had friends that had like toured um with this artist and and so i was prepared and so i double checked and i triple checked everything i went to youtube and i checked live versions and like copied stuff and i'm like okay i knew this certain per person arranged this thing so i won't get yelled at if like i put this in right well then of course we show up to the thing and it's like these are the wrong keys well actually what it was is because the singer did not feel comfortable with the altitude it felt different to sing right and yeah. you guys all know that like even if you're sick, you don't feel the same. And so it's right. like, so, so to rely on like muscle memory is hard in those situations. But what it came across as was a crazy person that was not nice and that was very mean. And, and it was like, it was really disappointing because, because this, this instance involved students around because it was for a school. And what I saw though, that was really, that balanced it out and it was a really good lesson for me was I saw all that stuff happen. I mean, this, this singer even was like, I'm not going to perform at your event now. I'm, I'm done. Wow. Bye. And so, so it was like, ah, oh, we have to figure this out. Uh, the producer of the show was like, okay, how can we calm you down? Like, no, it's going to be okay. Like they kind of became like mom, like they're there. It's okay. Right. Um, and then the leader of the band who is a good friend of mine, not of this person's band, but of the band at the school is, is a really great performer and educator. And, and I watched him go to the artist and very calmly listen. He knew everything. He knew all the ins and outs of what was not wrong. And he's like, he's like, Mel, I know that nothing's wrong. He's like, this is just happening. It's okay. And I watched him go to her. I watched how he talked to this person and calmed her down and just listened and was like, okay, what are your concerns? Okay. We'll make it work for you. Um, went back. We didn't change anything, but she thought that we did. And then everything was fine. And so it's like, don't be a diva Cho or, or pick and choose what you're going to be a diva about. Like, right. you know, I don't know.
but yeah, it's always really great to treat people nicely and kindly and your reputation will precede you. And when people get to the professional level, I've seen careers destroyed because of it, because if they, if they like upset the wrong person, boom, music, the music community is small. And like, if you offend the wrong people, like your career is kind of done. So be kind, be generous, um, but also learn to have boundaries because it's easy to like wear yourself out. I mean, you guys are singing all the time and like, you can't wear yourself out. You have to have your energy. You, you have to connect with people, but you also need to self-preserve. And so um, learning, learning kind of healthy boundaries um, as a performer, I think is really helpful. And then hopefully that prevents people from getting to the point of losing their mind at people. Yeah.